This lecture, we'll talk about the pins to the Arduino. The pins <clears throat> are the connections of, to the outside world. The main connections to the outside world are through these pins. Pins are basically just uh, metal, pieces of metal that come off the leads, pieces of metal that come off the microcontroller that you can connect to other devices. And they can be inputs and outputs and so on, and these are the main interface. So we're going to talk about these pins and how you control them through the sketch and how you observe them through the sketch. So uh, we've got a picture of the Arduino here. It's got several pins. Now the pins, actually we're looking at, this isn't the whole picture, but uh, this is most of it. Uh, there, the, the Arduino board itself has uh, two rows of pins. The regular Arduino Uno has two rows of pins, a row on the top, you can see that row on the top, and then a row on the bottom that you actually can't see in this image. So those are the rows of pins on the board. Those pins on the board are connected to the pins to the leads on the chip. So if you look at the microcontroller there, uh, circled in red, you can see, uh, you can see a, bunch of, uh, a bunch of leads, metal leads of the chip that are circled and highlighted. Those are the leads of the chip that are connected to those holes in the board. So uh, they are wired directly to those holes through, the, through traces inside the, inside the board. So if you want to access the outside world from the microcontroller, the way you do it is you take a wire and you plug it into those holes on the board. Those holes on the board are connected directly to the pins, to the leads of the microcontroller, and your code can then control the, the pins and observe the pins. So uh, pins are wired, uh, connect, pins are wires that are connected to the microcontroller. They're the main interface. Now there are other interfaces, right? There's the USB and so forth. But the main interface uh, when you're building one of these IoT systems is, uh, is through the pin. So all the other components in the system, or most of the other components in the system, will be connected to the Arduino board through those pins. You'll wire them to the pins. The voltages on the pins can be controlled by the sketch. Uh, if it's an output pin, which we'll talk about in a second. So you can control the voltages through a sketch. You can call a function inside your sketch. It will set the voltage on the pin. Uh, and pin voltages can be read by a sketch. So uh, that is, if something else is controlling the pin's voltage, you can read what that voltage is inside your sketch. So pins can be designated as output pins or input pins. An output pin is controlled by the Arduino, so the voltage is determined by your sketch. So your sketch calls a library function, which sets the voltage. Uh, other components can be controlled through these outputs. So say you want to take, like here, uh, an LED. Take an LED, you want to connect that to an Arduino. You will wire that, uh, the two leads of the LED to the pins of the Arduino. Uh, probably, actually, you'll probably use a resistor in between, but I'm not drawing that right now. But you can wire the, the leads of the component to the Arduino's pins. And then uh, you can write code inside your Arduino, write a sketch that assigns voltages to those pins and does something to the LED, presumably turns it off and on or makes it blink or something like that. So uh, that's what output pins are for. Output pins are for controlling other devices from your Arduino. Now, pins can also be uh, designated as input pins. Input pins are controlled by other components. So the outside component controls the voltage on the input pin, and the Arduino just reads the voltage. So in this way, the Arduino can receive input from the outside world. So this is how you connect sensors up to the Arduino. You take the sensor, you wire it to some of these, pin, these input pins. The Arduino can then read the voltage and interpret uh, whatever the data is that the sensor is producing. So in this case, we got a picture of a switch. Very simple. Uh, if we wire this up properly, this switch, uh, if it switch one way, actually this is a three state, but say, uh, say it's a regular switch, it just has two positions, on, off. So we can, we can wire a circuit so that if this switch would switch one way, that a voltage, uh, maybe a five volts would appear on one of the pins. And if it was switched the other, other way, then zero volts would appear. And then inside your sketch, you can detect if five volts is on the pin or if zero volts is on the pin. So you can determine if somebody has switched the, uh, flicked the switch or not and write some code to do something appropriate. So input pins are, are for reading from sensors, where output pins are generally for driving actuators, right? To, you can drive a motor with it or something like that if it's an output pin. Now, pins uh, can either be digital or analog. Now, we've mentioned what digital and analog are uh, before, but in this case, we're talking about digital and analog in terms of voltage. Now, digital voltage, digital, basically the difference between digital and analog, just refresh your memory, digital is like integers, where analog is like real numbers, right? Continuous values, but digital is discrete, 0, 1, 2, so on. So in our machine, 
Uh, if it's a digital pin, the voltage can either be zero volts or five volts uh, on an Arduino Uno anyway. And there are other variants of Arduino that maybe change that. But uh, for Arduino Uno, it's zero volts, five volts on a digital pin. Now, an analog pin can receive uh, anywhere, can zero, usually zero to five volts. Actually, you can change that range if you want to. But, but a continuous set of values anywhere in there. So uh, some pins on the Arduino are digital only, can only act as digital pins. And they're labeled. So if you look at the, uh, at the Arduino board, one side of them, it says digital. Uh, so th uh, there, actually, I believe it has 14. Yeah, pins 0 through 13. 0 through 13 are uh, digital pins. So you can read digital inputs uh, off of a digital pin. You can write digital outputs. So you can read uh, input. You can act as an input and output as a digital line. Uh, and it's 0 volts or 5 volts. Now, some, volt, some pins can be analog. These analog pins, uh, they're labeled A0 through A, A5, right? And they're on the other side. Uh, they're also labeled, clearly labeled on the Arduino board. Uh, these analog pins, you can read analog voltages. So if the voltage, uh, whatever the voltage is, the voltage can be interpreted as a digital number. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, but the voltage can be interpreted and read by a sketch. And so uh, the device can, uh, your device can respond according to whatever the voltage is. And it can be an analog voltage. It's useful to read analog sensors. That's primarily what you use it for. So there are a lot of sensors that output analog information, so you need to read those. Uh, Analog-only pins are clearly labeled. No pins can generate analog output. So the digital pins can read digital input and drive digital output. You can drive zeros and ones uh, by calling library functions of Arduino. But the analog pins uh, cannot create analog outputs. They can read analog inputs and convert them to digital. They can read analog inputs, but they can't drive analog outputs. Uh, that's because we don't have a digital to analog converter inside the, the device. Uh, so now there is a way we can fake it <laughs> using pulse width modulation, and we'll get to that uh, in a later course. Thank you. Mm -hmm.